Hello, my name is Artur Boronat, and in this short research demo, I'm going to present how the EMF SINCA can help the impatient, the impatient programmer to adopt MDE technology, or actually how to adapt MDE technology to reality. I would like to start by advertising a learning resource that is available on the MDE Net platform. Under the uh, resource on what is MDE, you'll find an overview of MDE. And in there, you'll find this talk by Carla Araujo that actually captures the essence of model driven engineering and this how we can use models for developing software. In MDE, we start by modeling key aspects of software so that we can learn and reflect and design the software to be developed by applying design patterns and the best modeling practices. And there we can use, for example, AADL for capturing software architectures or um, BPMN for defining business processes. We can define programs with flowcharts or activity diagrams, etc. In MD, we normally use a standard modeling notations like UML to express software aspects. Initially, models are defined manually for informing the development process. After modeling design concern, we implement those design ideas into source code that contributes to a deliverable software artifact, which could be an executable prototype or documentation. Once, we, once we've got the hang of it, we are familiar with a modeling language, and we have used it, to, we have used it successfully in several ap applications we start discovering patterns and routine work that could be automated. Then we are ready for automating software development processes using MDE, where models become formal entities that can be used as data in workflows. Such workflows are implemented using rich techniques like model validation, model to model transformations, and model to text transformations. This approach ends up with the design of a low code platform for developing software. As discussed in Carla's talk, this has many benefits, like facilitating the development of rapid prototypes while improving quality assurance. But why is MDE not mainstream technology yet? Why do we still need initiatives like the research network MDNet to disseminate the advantages of MDE? Well, to use MDE software developers and agile practitioners need to learn a modeling language first. Learning a modeling language can be quite time consuming. For example, the UML user guide has about 500 pages and the reference manual, just over 750. On the positive side, we also have wonderful books like Perditas using UML and Fowler's distilled UML that help. On the other hand, we could say that DSLs are tailored for a particular application domain and soothe the upfront learning curve for applying MD. However, to use DSLs, first we need a low code development environment, which requires a fair amount of effort. In our approach, we assume that the practitioner is a technical expert who is able to model solutions to specific design concerns using the preferred modeling language of choice. For a practitioner, these could be Python, Java, C Sharp, or a scripting language like Groovy. Hence, the action of modeling happens anyway, although at a rather lower level of abstraction, yet it comes with some advantages. Models are programs that can be executed one can get things done. In addition, the, ex the executable, executable prototype is a good mechanism for eliciting feedback from customers and the stakeholders. Mainstream programming languages usually have a mature tool ecosystem, which can be used to develop robust systems and be more productive. Well-known libraries and SDKs can be reused almost effortlessly, and documentation is usually available and support can be obtained from a large user base. These aspects are not usually available in MDE research prototypes. When implementing a domain model using a programming language, we are cutting the middleman, that is the modeling language that is used to think and communicate ideas at an abstract level. However, the domain model does not disappear. It is implicitly represented in source code, although it may be scattered and be rather simplistic. MDE, on the other hand, captures domain models explicitly with appropriate modeling notations that enable automated processing. So it may be worth exploring approaches for applying MDE technology in existing software applications with implicit domain models. Then the problem that we are studying is as follows. Given a domain model in an existing 
in an existing MDE agnostic software application, how can we apply MDE technology in order to enable both modeling practices and the application of MDE technology without requiring an upfront commitment? To achieve this smooth adoption, new MDE solutions should be backward compatible, reusing the data of existing applications, and they should be retractable in case they are no longer needed. This problem can be regarded as an adaptation of the view update problem if we consider program snapshots at runtime. That is, if we consider data in addition to the main models, where program snapshots represent the system state and where model instances correspond to views. Our solution is a tool called EMF Synca that can sync MDE agnostic Java programs with EMF models. This is achieved by automatically inferring and mapping a specification between programs and models that exploits structural similarities between them. Moreover, the EMF sync provides a DSL for specifying domain-specific syncing policies. Syncing is bidirectional and can be performed at runtime. Given a program snapshot or excerpts of it, the EMF sync will obtain the counter representation of that program snapshot as an instance of the domain model. Such initial synchronization can happen in two modes, using a push-based model where the user determines what needs to be synced, or using a pull-based model where the program snapshot is translated on demand as required by an MD task. In this example, we have a domain model of an online store, and we want to implement a query using OCL expressions to find out customers that are returning products too frequently. We could start by exploring and a store, a store returns object that is related to a customer and to the store. So to start syncing this snapshot, we will start with this object and we obtain uh, an instance of the concept store returns in the view model. When running a model management task, like the query I have just mentioned, the email sync will sync those objects that are required for performing the query. When object links corresponding to associations in the domain model are traversed in a query, then linked objects will also be synced. In this case, we, when we traverse these links, we will the EMF syncer will map the object customer to an instance of the class customer and the object store to an instance of the object store and the properties of the, and the features of the uh, objects that are used in the query will also be mapped. This means that the latency experienced by the user during syncing is balanced between object initialization and on-demand loading, and it is task dependent. Once all of the objects required for performing an update are synced, the update is performed on the model instance. In our case, we want to flag those customers that are returning products too frequently. Once an update is performed, EMF Synca detects where those updates have been applied in the model instance and narrows down the parts of the source program snapshot that are related to them. Such updates may break the consistency relation that is defined between the program and the model, as in the example. For example, the preferred customer flag has different values in the model and in the program. The EMF Synca can then sync back the update at the level of feature value incrementally, which is much more efficient than propagating the whole model back. Let's see how the EMF sync can be used in, in practice. In order to use the EMF sync, we need to import it as a Java dependency. In this case, I'm using Gradle for configuring my project, and this is the dependency that needs to be used. And in addition, we need to import aspect J. Aspect J is used to be able to track changes in model instances. So we also need to import this aspect and we need to indicate where are the namespaces of the Java packages that are of the code that is generated from the EMF models. In this, in, in this example, I have several um, packages that are generated in different namespaces. Now to use the EMF Synca, we need to in, declare a variable EMF Synca and we need to instantiate it. The first parameter of the constructor is a list of namespaces that correspond 
to the declaration of the domain model in the source program, in the Java program, that is MDE agnostic. And then I need to indicate where is the equal package that defines the MDE counterpart of that domain model. And we need to indicate what is the syncing strategy. Eager will be if we choose a push-based mode of execution, and we can also select the lazy mode of the lazy syncing strategy that corresponds to the pull-based uh, execution mode. Then when we are migrating information forward, in this case, we, we are implementing a solution for the tool transformation contest. Um, we are taking a, an object that is part of a program snapshot at runtime, and we apply the method forward sync, and this obtains an instance of a class of the EMF model. This instance can be used now to apply updates to the model instance. And in order to propagate the changes back to the program snapshot, we simply have to use the back sync method on the EMF model instance. And then we obtain a Java object that corresponds to the updated Java object that will belong to the programming snapshot, to the source programming snapshot. As you see in this example, we are we are not specifying any specification on how the transformation needs to be performed. The MF Synca infers it completely automatically from a structural, a structural similarities between the EMF, the Java program and the EMF model. As I was saying earlier, we can also specify additional information about this mapping process, about this mapping specification, in case, for example, we want to work with renamed entities. So in this case, we could uh, map uh, a feature age within the class, within the Java class person to a feature year of birth in the E class, in the E class of the EMF model person. And then we could additionally specify how the data of the source field needs to be transformed in order to be a correct value, feature value in the target MD model. And we can also specify the action that obtains the reverse transformation. Right? So EMF, if we provide um, a transformation specification in this way, the EMF sinker will be able to take into account domain specific knowledge when Map when obtaining model instances from programming snapshots. We have developed a case study with the DCPDS benchmark with data analytic queries representative of big data tasks. In our case study, we have developed a domain model that is mapped to a relational database using Hibernate, and we have developed a domain model in EMF. We load data from the database and run queries over model instances that are obtained by the EMF Synca on demand. Depending on the query, the EMF Synca may need to pull a lot of data or simply the relevant excerpts that are used in the corresponding query uh, or model management task. We have run experiments in order to analyze the overhead of using the EMF Synca for performing those tasks. And for checking the pragmatism of using the EMF Synca at runtime, we implemented a naive object mapper that is ad hoc for the given domain model. Its runtime is used as baseline for comparing the performance of the EMF Synca, and its runtime is this, this line in blue here. The example query one performs a query from a contextual instance, and the update only affects that instance. Query three, Q3, Q3 instead selects a number of objects, applying updates to all of them. In the chart, we see that the EMF Synca incurs some overhead penalty with respect to the reference object mapper when large collections of objects need to be synced, as you see here. In any case, it can map more than half a million objects in less than a second. For queries that require syncing less objects, like query one, the EMF Synca works much faster than the reference solution thanks to its strategic propagation of object. And this includes backward syncing of updates in query three. As you can see, the runtime is much lower than, it's much faster than the uh, baseline. 
In this demo, I have presented the EMF SYNCA and how it can be applied to adopt MD technology in existing Java programs with a reasonably well-defined domain model. The EMF SYNCA is a good candidate to implement MD solutions that can work with MD agnostic programs at runtime, as it adds a, reasonably, a reasonable overhead when syncing objects, thanks to its on-demand and incremental propagation features. Information about the tool can be found in this article, on my webpage and on the webpage of the tool. Thank you for listening and I'll be available afterwards for answering questions you may have.